Welcome to Online Bible Study tonight. We're back online doing the Bible study the way we used to do it. And so glad to be here with you. Glad we can join up together and share some things from the Word of God. Today I'm going to be speaking to you from Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 18. And as we talk about Romans and Romans 12, I want to just... Uh, real quickly tell you that tonight I'm not going to absolutely write out this, excuse me, read out the scriptures and underline. What I'm going to do is give you notes on these scriptures. So if you turn in your Bible, I'm going to give you a chance right now to go to your Bible to Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 18. Romans 12, 9 through 18, as I'm getting out my Bible here, I'm going to be reading tonight uh, from Romans chapter 12. And as I read this, I want you to um, follow along with me in the word as you read this, and then we'll go through the notes, okay? So Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 18. Okay, follow along with me. Let love be without hypocrisy. Detest what is evil. Cling to what is good. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lack in diligence and zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be persistent in prayer, share with the saints in their needs, pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another and do not be proud, instead associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Give careful thought to what you do in honor that is honorable in everyone's eyes. And if possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with, with everyone. And so as I read these scriptures, I really uh, wrote down some notes on my iPad. And uh, they're going to look somewhat uh, in cursive and scribbled a bit. But I'm going to try to kind of walk them through with you to understand that as you read this scripture, Paul is talking about doing life. He's talking about doing life with other believers. He's talking about doing life. And what does it mean to do life with others? And what's doing life really mean when it comes to a follower of Jesus? And he goes through, and I went through, it, as I'm reading this, I'm thinking, Paul's doing bullet points. He's actually saying things in short sentences as bullet points to address. So I did that tonight, so bear with me in my handwriting here. But Romans chapter 12, here's what he says. He says, love, bullet point one, love without hypocrisy. Be sincere. Love must be sincere. So he wants you to be sincere in your love for one another, not a hypocrite, not putting on, not acting like it's, you know, it's a force to do it. There's some people I know are hard to love. They are, they are what we call the EG, extra grace required EGR people. And sometimes we're that way. Love must be sincere, real love. He says, this is the bullet point one. Love must be sincere. What? Detest what is evil. Don't applaud what is evil. Don't applaud what is wrong, detest what's evil, and then cling to the good. Grab a hold of what's good. Say, yes, those things that are good whatsoever, honorable, if they be of any virtue, any praise, think on those things, cling to good. And here's a, here's a checklist of life, brothers and sisters, as you're dealing with each other. Love without hypocrisy, detest evil, cling to good, and love deeply as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply as brothers and sisters. This kind of love is the love we've really alluded to and been talking about, and we will talk about this Sunday. A love that, that sees needs, a love that, that shares life, does life together, a love that serves, and, and a love that's going to be, as you hear this Sunday, that is sacrificial. A love that will be sacrificial in what it does. And that's a, a deep love for brothers and sisters. And then... Obviously, the, the other bullet point, the fifth bullet point here is outdo each other in showing honor. Can you, can you stop for a moment? I'm going to erase all this and uh, just want you to, to notice this for a moment. He says, I want you to outdo, outdo each other. I read the scriptures in the word in showing honor that we prefer one another, that we would put others first that we would show honor and respect. You know, there's a whole series of messages we're doing in the church in May. Well, it's entitled A Culture of Honor. A Culture of Honor. A whole series in, in church in May is going to be about that. Honoring mom, honoring dad, honoring uh, our elders, honoring those who have sacrificed, honoring those who've given uh, their lives, and actually remembering those too. Honor. There's a culture of honor that the church should have showing honor. 
You know, I was raised in church where sometimes there wasn't a culture of honor, especially towards uh, those that were in leadership. Sometimes there was not a culture of honor at all, but words were spoken and attitudes were given. And instead of seeing the pastor and the seeing leadership as a gift, they were dishonored. Well, God doesn't honor that. We need to outdo one another when it comes to honoring each other, not trying to get our way, but honor. So those are five bullet points Paul gives. Well, there's more. There's, here's six. He says, never lack in zeal. I can tell you that when I feel uh, my tank going low, I, I want to go to God in prayer, and I do it often. And I pray, God, set me on fire. Don't let me miss what you're wanting to do. I don't want to get up in the mornings and be halfway. I, I, I don't want to be half-hearted. He says here, be, he says, be fervent in spirit. Again, this is, this is all about passion. Be passionate, believers. The church should be passionate. People who are serving with us should be passionate. I've been at ball games and I've been, I've been shouting and yelling and right in the middle of fans and everything else because I am one and I've been there and I've had people act like they want to fight me. But I don't want to be that way just at a ball game. I want to be even more so in my spirit that I have passion serving the Lord. And then I serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. You, you know what? I don't think, you, I mean, there's a time where you have to rest, but serving the Lord is not a thing you do on occasion. Serving God is not a hobby. Think about it. Serving God is not just, a, well, I, that's one of my hobbies. No, serving God is a command. You serve the Lord and by doing what? By serving people and serving his body, you serve God. Serve the Lord. And then you do this. You rejoice in hope. You rejoice in hope. Go back here for a moment. You rejoice in hope. You, you, you're thankful for what, the hope that is around us, that there is hope. We, we rejoice. I always, I always look at it and I say, God, uh, I, I want to see the potential in people and know that as long as there is breath in their life, there's potential and there's hope for things to happen in them. I want to rejoice in hope. I want to be patient in affliction. This is hard for me. I mean, when I'm in difficult times, I'm not very patient. When I don't get my way, I'm not very patient. When I don't get to eat right away, I'm not very patient. I'm ha- I get hangry. But the Bible says in affliction, we say, God, help us in the middle of this to be patient in affliction. These are easier said than done words, aren't they? But God wants us to do that and to be persistent in prayer. I would say that the persistence in prayer, prayer is probably, I would list as maybe the top two or three things that are difficult for a believer to do. I would say sharing their faith is hard for some people. And praying is really, really, really difficult for people. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to be, uh, be uh, will hurt you a bit, but I don't want it to hurt you. I want it to be a little bit of a, a reminder, a challenge to us. There was a, a prophetic word given years ago that, a, that said this, that, we, that uh, the Lord was displeased because, uh, and it was not at our church, but it was in years ago in the, in the movement, and uh, uh, years ago in the Pentecostal movement. It says, the Lord is grieved because they, or my people, praise the God that they don't ever pray to. They praise the God. They sing to the God and about the God that they never pray to. That's convicting. God wants us to be persistent in prayer. And then what else? Well, he wants us to do this. Another bullet point. You got six more. Share with those in need. Be a person who shares, who says that I'm going to open my heart to others. And then show hospitality. You know, we have people in our in our church. I think of John and Irene who just worked on started on staff with us a few months ago. They have really the spirit of hospitality. It's not just about uh, food and welcoming. It's about having the gift. There's just a real gifting of hospitality to be to be gifted, to be hospitable. And that's really not it's beyond the gifting. It's beyond it's about who we're, we should be. That we open up our hearts and and hearts and minds and and even our homes to others. And then we bless those who persecute us. That's hard to do. It's hard to bless someone who persecutes you. It's hard to bless someone who is purposely coming against you in their word and in their actions. I mean, as a pastor, I hear of people in their stories, and I'm thinking there's just there's no way people can be that mean. But they are. People can be mean, man. But how do you bless them? You do it step by step every single day in the process. And what you do is you don't curse 
Now, I know it's talking about biblically, don't put a curse on somebody, but I'm, I'm going to go even further. Don't, don't desire to curse them out. Because, I mean, so not, when people come against me, I just want to talk trash about them and to them. That's my flesh that shows up. So he says, don't walk in that flesh. But let God do his work in you, and you bless those. You don't have to be around them. I mean, you don't have to interact with them. You don't have to love on them. And be, what I mean by love on them, be their, their, be their best friend. But you can say, look, I can bless them, and I want to pray for them, and I'm not going to curse them. And then here's what we do. We rejoice with those who rejoice, and we weep with those who weep. Here, again, all these bullet points, Paul is saying, these are, these are quick reads. I want you to know this is how you live your life. Now that you're saved, now that your body's a living sacrifice, now that God has redeemed you through his son Jesus, here's how you're to live. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. It, it is easier, Spurgeon says this, it is easier to weep with those who weep than it is to rejoice with those who rejoice. That's by Spurgeon. Spurgeon says it is easier to weep with those who weep that it is to rejoice with those who rejoice because we tend to be uh, jealous or envious of others. And that makes it difficult. It's part of the flesh. Paul says that we're to celebrate when people celebrate and when people are going through hard times, we're to be there for them too. Lastly, in these last four, he says, live in harmony. Live in harmony. That's, that's the desire of God as we live in unity. I have people uh, sometimes... Um, question or wonder why we don't talk about certain political topics behind the pulpit or or maybe we don't get into some of the other uh, conversations that others do. Well, here's why. Because there's plenty in this world that divides us. But the church is God's instrument that brings unity. The church. So when the, in the pulpit and in our ministry, we want to be life-giving. I said a few weeks ago that we want to be a healing agent to this world. That's what God's called us to be, a healing agent. And so live in harmony. And, and not to be proud about that or to be proud. And not to be wise in our own estimation, but to be a healing agent, humble, living in harmony, and not repaying evil for evil. There's a couple more points here I want to make. But we're not to repay evil for evil. This is my nature. This is your nature to repay evil for evil. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to be we're not going to be self-deceived to think we're wise and we're not. We're not going to be puffed up. We're going to be humble. We're going to serve people. We're going to live in harmony. And then those last two things, if you can read these last two things, I'll read it out to you. Give careful thought to do what is honorable. So instead of um, letting anger rule you, instead of let anger ruling you or your own flesh, what is honorable is to be peace a peaceful person is peace and love. It shows honor, to be honorable. That when people look at you, they don't say, well, that person just lost their mind. They say that person was honorable, how God helped them and be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Peace and love, not anger in the flesh. And the last point about this, because we're almost done, is if possible, as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. Now, let me say it very clearly because I think I need to say this. This scripture says, look at it later, read it on your own, but the note, I'm writing the notes. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. There, Paul seems to say that there are some people, some people that don't want peace. People that don't want, do not, I gotta write that down, want peace. There's some people that just do not want to have peace with you. And they may not want peace at all. Sometimes they want to hang on to stuff, and sometimes they don't want to live at peace. But as far as you, you do your part not to get sucked into stuff, and you do your part to repent when you need to repent, apologize when you need to apologize, to try to live at peace, try not to stir it up. This is godly. The God loves this. And here's what it, what it means. It's basically about doing life in, in the church, doing life in the church, doing life with brothers and sisters. This is doing life, friends. This is what doing life is all about. It's about these points we were making, being honorable, not losing your mind, uh, be at peace with people, show hospitality, serve one another, rejoice with each other. That's called love sharing, love sharing. So that's my prayer for you today is that your love, your love would share 
your life, your life with others. Let's pray. Father, I pray for those who are watch this Bible study. I pray you would speak to their hearts. And God, the simplicity of your word and how, God, you speak to us directly, very practically about our lives. We want to worship you and we want to praise you and we want to pray to you. But we also want to live out a way that gives pleasure to you. And Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.